What's going on, Athletes and Cannabis family? Gerald Moore Jr., founder of Athletes and Cannabis. I want to thank everybody who supported us on this journey and mission to educate athletes uh, and just average citizens about cannabis and how it impacts athletes while also sharing athlete stories about how they've their lives have been impacted by cannabis and sports. Um, I have some updates um, that I want to share with you all regarding the new NBA uh, CBA. So I'm going to share my screen. Also, uh, thanks to all of our subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click that red subscribe button. Also, please like and comment on our content and let us know how we're doing. Let us know what information you want us to uh, share or um, you know anything that you think we should know. Um, please uh, you know contact us and let us know. We also accept support. Uh, you can send donations to uh, my cash app, which is um, G13 Ventures, G13 Ventures, uh, cash up sign, dollar sign, G13 Ventures. Uh, that helps support, you know, the work that I'm doing as a reporter, journalist in this space um, and just trying to spread awareness around, uh, you know, what's going on in this, you know, industry uh, called the cannabis industry. And so uh, here is uh, I use uh, marijuana moment for a lot of content because they're great. Um, they do a really good job in covering a lot of content, especially as a news source. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, news sources uh, geared towards strictly the cannabis industry, obviously, with it being a new industry. Uh, obviously, it was underground. You still have a legacy market. So you still have a lot of things that are still hidden. Um, but, you know, as the legal industry continues to grow, as laws continue to change and evolve and prohibition continues um, to weed itself out, you know, we need more people. Uh, to continue to educate and share the information far and wide so uh, people are educated on what's going on. So here's the article. This is mel marijuanamoment.net. Again, great source for a lot of uh, uh, resources, uh, research. So the NBA clarifies players won't be able to promote marijuana brands, but league will allow passive investments and in, in testing, which is a little odd, right? Like, Athletes can make a lot of money from sponsorships, endorsements, and things of that nature, right? Using their name, image, and likeness to promote and market brands and products. So when you look at cannabis in this global market, uh, even the national market, I mean, it's booming. You have some players in Colorado or team professional teams in Colorado, New York, D.C., um, you know, Texas, or not Texas, uh, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, um, you know, Florida, there's a lot of different professional teams in, the, in these different states that now have legalization. Some of these states only have medical marijuana. We're in, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, so we only have a medical program. Um, obviously, Ohio has uh, the Cleveland Indians or the Guardians, the Cincinnati Reds baseball teams and baseball just did their um, thing with the marijuana or CBD uh, deal. And then you have the Cincinnati uh, Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. And obviously you have Ohio State University, which people say, well, they're pretty much an NFL team. Um, but when you talk about, you know, and obviously the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, so this impacts, you know, my state and the athletes. So telling athletes they won't be able to promote marijuana brands, but can pa make passive investments. So you can make money off of it passively, but you can't really promote it. You can't really be the face of a brand, which, again, uh, you know, I have a problem with. Uh, obviously, these leagues, these leagues are family friendly leagues. Um, so they try to they want to appeal to kids because obviously, you know, parents bring their kids to these games. Kids look up to these athletes. But at the end of the day, uh, we know this is an adult. Uh, industry, uh, you know, athletes curse, athletes fight, athletes do all types of things. Parents are drinking in the stands. So to say, well, an athlete can't put his face behind a cannabis brand just because we want to protect these kids is, you know, for me, I'm a father, I'm a husband. Like I talk to my kids about my medicine. This is my medicine. This is daddy's medicine. Uh, you do not touch this. I keep it out of reach of them. I keep it stored uh, safely. So my kids, we have that conversation and they're toddlers. Uh, so I believe we need to be having these conversations far and wide. Uh, you know, parents need to be having the conversation with the kids, grandparents, parents, et cetera. So here's the article, the National Basketball Association NBA players 
will not be able to promote marijuana uh, companies under a new collective bargaining agreement. Contrary to the early reports about the deal with the players union, a new summary document shows, but the league will remove drug testing requirements for THC while allowing players to passively invest in the industry. The document stipulates that while players may promote a company that makes products containing CBD, they will continue to be prohibited from promoting marijuana companies. In other, in other words, don't expect to see Kevin Durant coming out with his own line of intoxicating cannabis products anytime soon, or for players to otherwise be publicly endorsing marijuana brands. That said, other details that were previously reported do check out according to the key deal points memo that summarizes the collective bargaining agreement, CBA, that's still being fully drafted. The document was first reported earlier on Wednesday by SF Gate. Under the CBA that is set to go in effect on July 1st, players can invest in CBD companies without specific restrictions, and they may also hold a passive non-controlling interest in a company that makes products containing marijuana. Arguably the most meaningful change in the league's policy is the removal of marijuana drug testing requirements. Marijuana will be removed from the prohibited substances list and deal, uh, deal points paper says. However, it clarifies that a team that has reasons to believe one of its players is under the influence of marijuana while engaged in NBA or team related activities or has a dependency issue involving marijuana may refer to the player to may refer the player to a treatment program. That is, players are free to consume cannabis legally off the court, but they remain barred from using marijuana at games or other team related events like press conferences. The NBA and the teams may impose reasonable discipline on players who are under the influence while engaged in any team activity or in violation of the law, the document says. This reform will formally codify what has been the league's decision to temporarily suspend cannabis testing for the past three seasons. Marijuana icon and NBA commentator Snoop Dogg recently weighed in on the policy change, applauding the league for taking steps that would allow players to use cannabis for medical purposes, including a potential opioid alternative. Uh, Michelle Roberts, a one-time head of the National Basketball Association, NBPA, who also joined the board of major cannabis company Cresco Labs in 2020, previously predicted that formal change to, the, to codify the policy could come soon. In 2021, it was announced that the, that the online marijuana marketplace Weed Maps is teaming up with NBA star Kevin Durant for a multi-year partnership that's aimed at destigmatizing cannabis and showcasing the plant's potential value for athletes, wellness, and recovery. A growing number of professional leagues have taken steps to enact marijuana policy reform as more states move, have moved to legalize cannabis. Nevada sports regulators recently voted to send a proposed regulatory amendment to the governor that would formally protect athletes from being penalized over using or processing marijuana in compliance with state law. The Chicago Cubs recently became the first Major League Baseball MLB team to officially partner with the CBD company, which follows the national organization's league-wide partnership with a popular CBD brand last year. MLB has stood out among other professional sports leagues as more willing to respond to the changing marijuana policy landscape. For example, it clarified in a memo in 2020 that players will not be punished for using cannabis while they aren't working but they can't be personally sponsored by a marijuana company or hold investments in the industry. UFC announced in 2021 that they would no longer be punishing fighters over positive marijuana tests. Separately, students, student athletes that are part of the NCAA would no longer automatically lose their eligibility to play following a positive marijuana test under rules that were recommended by a key committee last year. The National Leagues, uh, the, the National Football League's NFL drug po testing policy already changed demonstrably in 2020 as part of the collective bargaining agreement. Read the key points of the NBA collective bargaining agreement below. So here's the uh, collective bargaining agreement posted April 27, 2023. I'll fast forward to where it talks about uh, cannabis. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Business opportunities, uh, it's emerging. So emerging markets, 
uh, sports betting and fantasy. Let's see what it says there. Investment. A player may hold a passive non-controlling interest in a sports betting or fantasy company limited to less than 1% for a company that offers or facilitates NBA-related bets and contests. Endorsements. A player may participate in sports betting and fantasy endorsement that involves general brand endorsement and or endorsement of betting on uh, non-NBA sports. Cannabis. Investment. A player may invest in a company that makes products containing CBD. A player may also hold a passive non-controlling interest in a company that makes products containing marijuana. Promotion. Players will continue to be prohibited from promoting marijuana companies, but a player may promote a company that makes products containing CBD. So definitely let me know uh, in the comments what you all think about this new CBA uh, for the NBA. Also, let us know what you think about the MLB, UFC, um, NFL, the NCAA, and all the things and the rules that have been changing. What do you think about cannabis, marijuana? What do you think about athletes and cannabis? Are you an athlete that consumes cannabis? How does it help you? How has it helped you in your pregame or pre-workout? How has it helped you during? How does it help you post? Uh, I know me personally, I consume cannabis pre-workout, pre-game. I also consume it, uh, you know, if you're playing, you know, in a pickup game, you can consume it during the game and then obviously post-game. Uh, it helps me wake up, warm up the body, help shake the cobwebs, cobwebs out of the brain. Uh, it kind of helps with focus. It helps with loosening up the body. Uh, post-game, it helps with rest and recovery. Uh, so it helps the body rest and recover, uh, especially as I'm getting older. It's a little bit harder for the body to recover after, you know, sports. Uh, so that's how cannabis helps me uh, as an athlete. So we'd love to know how it helps you. Uh, also, again, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Let us know. Show us some love. Uh, share the page if you think our information uh, or the or or the the content is worth sharing. Uh, also, like, like, and comment. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. Also follow us on Instagram at Athletes and Cannabis. You can follow us on LinkedIn as well, Athletes and Cannabis. Uh, we're building this from the ground up. You know what I mean? Like no investors, you know, no banks, no nothing. It's, it's straight. You know, I'm a stay at home dad. I had a passion. I love cannabis. I love sports. I love, you know, health and wellness. And so I see the opportunity and I just wanted to bring it to the people uh, direct to consumers. So thank you all for supporting us thus far. I'm going to continue to bring content. Hopefully I can continue to bring more content. Also, if you love what, what I'm doing and you want to be a part of it, I'm looking for reporters. I'm looking for hosts. I'm looking for producers. I'm looking for directors. I'm looking for athletes who want to be involved on this journey to, to make this a network, to make this a huge platform uh, that helps other people. Um, that helps destigmatize and end the stigma, it helps push legalization, uh, and helps just pull, push general health and wellness uh, in a holistic way. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, you know, I'm looking for hosts. If you want to help me host podcasts, if you want to help host the show, if you have an idea, uh, I'm looking for partners. If you're an investor out there, hey, investors, we're looking for investors. Uh, we're looking for people that want to invest. If you want equity, uh, we're looking for cash investors, um, you know, reach out. I ain't hard to find. You know what I mean? I'm not hard to find. Again, my name is Gerald Moore Jr. You can follow me personally on Instagram at Gerald Moore Jr. Uh, and just, yeah, you know, find me, type me in, Google me, baby. You know what they say? Google me. I am not hard to find. So again, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, shout out to Marijuana Moment and all the work they're doing, all the cannabis entrepreneurs, all the cannabis creators, all the cannabis uh, advocates and activists and uh, folks that are really trying to open this up. So you know, we could free the plant once and for all. So again, thank you guys. Peace, peace and blessings and love and all that good stuff. You guys enjoy your day. Peace.